Right, so what I'm doing with Ruby at the moment, I'm adding white to, to kind of bring out some of the highlights on Ruby's fur. But to do that, I'm using the SAA watercolour white, which is this one here. Okay, try and bring that into shot for you. Hopefully you can see that. Can you see that? I'm going to bring it up. Uh, getting higher. So it's SAA watercolour white. It's opaque white. You can use um, any other watercolour white. doesn't really matter which. Or you can use gouache as well, white gouache. So whichever way you prefer to do it, doesn't really matter. Just a matter of, just a means of kind of getting the highlights on, on the dog. Right, so all I'm trying to work on is some of the highlighted areas. I don't want it too thick, this paint, because I don't want it looking like an old dog. Because it will do if you've got, if your paint's too white. So I want it just so it kind of shows the highlights. So it's just thick enough to show a bit of a difference in, in brightness around the fur without it going too bright, if you know what I mean. I don't want the dog looking, as I said, too old. So I've got to be very careful with that. So I'm kind of mixing this to like a single cream at the moment, but I can get thinner. So it's quite watery. So you've got a few whiter hairs down here actually. So I'm going to pop those in. Again, it's not too bright. So we want to be careful of it. Just get one of my test papers a minute. So when you look at my test paper, this is, you can see I've got a big puddle of water here. This is one of the reasons why I have my board on an angle, because the water runs down to the bottom of the palette. Which is ideal, you can just bring that into the paint as you go along. So if I have a watery version of that, just pick up a little bit of that thick paint in there and just run it in. It's quite watery. This is a watery version, okay, I'm making it quite thick on purpose. That will dry fairly light, okay. But when you go into the thicker paint, just so it's thin enough to paint a straight line, get a bit more water in there. Roll your brush into it. You can see the difference in brightness. Between the two, I don't you should see that on the camera hopefully. So I'll do that again. So you can see the difference there between the two just about. Okay, so water the white down if you're doing highlights, unless you want it to be really white, okay? So I'm going to make it quite thin as you can see, so it's quite watery that. That's all I want. I don't want anything brighter than that. Just make sure my hand's dry because I tend to put my hand on my tissue here and uh, then I put my hand on the painting. Normally, as you know, I'll have a piece of paper underneath my hand here. Because I'm doing this as part tutorial, part commission, which is a bit risky really, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I've decided, just for here, just for now, I'll take that off. I'd have to put some whiskers in here looking at that as well sometime. Because there's some dark whiskers coming around there. Okay. So it's all about looking at the, the picture. I want to be a little bit thicker there. So I'm going to pull up some of that neat white into the water just below. And I noticed just around the old chin around this area here, there's a few brighter, whiter hairs. So it's slightly thicker paint, that's all I've used. But I'm not covering all the detail underneath, that's what you've got to be careful of, you don't want to completely cover everything up. Okay, a few little tap marks just break up that black, that black area down there. And I need some around here as well, I just noticed. So what I don't want to do is overdo this as I said, I don't want to make it look too old. When you come down to a white area, I put a mixture of <clears throat> kind of French Hills Marine, Lamp Black, a little bit of yellowy greeny colour in there as well, believe it or not, <laughs> underneath the chin. And then I would have to work on this area down here then to kind of get this looking brighter. And this is like a creamy consistency white now, just so it stands out a little bit more. So it's just playing with the water really, how much water you add to your your thicker paint at the top of your palette there. Um, the kind of palettes you're using, it's entirely your choice. You can use a plastic one, so you can use this as um, ceramic, as you can hear. I prefer ceramic because the water tends to lie nice and flat. So you can see this is dried in here a lot, but it's not dried in a big bubble. It's dried nice and flat. So it's easier to see the kind of different tones within the paint and the palette as well. So it's well worth uh, investing in ceramic if you can, or even a ceramic dish. Anything really like that. So I want to pop these highlights in, varying the angle here and there. So this is like a creamy white now. Not double cream, single cream. <laughs> so it's pourable. <laughs> okay, uh, and then going into there, a few more whites, and that's nearly done already, that bit. So I want a bit more in the middle. Again, because it's quite thick, you find you can only get three or four strokes of your paint out of that. 
So the thicker the paint is on your brush, the fewer times you can actually make a mark on the paper. Okay. I've got a lot of noise going on outside because we've just got a combine harvester going past me, so bear with me. Obviously living in a rural area, we get a lot of tractors and combine harvesters. Not that it's a problem, I think it's quite good. Okay, so that'll do for that white area. So I've still got to do all the back and the rest of the face as well and the ears with the white as well. But without overdoing it, if you know what I mean. So, uh, so I'm going to carry on with that and get that done. And we'll show you this when it's all completed. So thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again in a bit. Bye bye now.